Hi, people. Welcome to Africa Chat Show. I am really excited today because I have one of the most preteen people that I've been wanting to talk to for a while now. Her name is Erica. She's recently visited Ghana, my own um, birth country. And I was like, we got to talk. We got to sit down and actually have a conversation about her visit, how she felt, and everything that she's got going on. On the other side of things, I do understand that Erica is a traveling tour agent or she does own it. So I'm just going to hand it over to you so you can actually tell it better since it's your story. So welcome to the show, Erica. It's over to you now. All right. Thanks for having me. And and I'm really sorry, everybody. I'm a little sick. <laughs> so I'm, oh, I'm so sorry, but I'm going to make it through this. You My will. name is Erica <laughs> James. On social media, I'm better known as EJ, the travel diva. Yes, I am a travel agent. I'm a travel blogger. I have a podcast called the Erica James Travel Show. And everything I do is all about travel. I just love travel. And yes, I just got back from Ghana, the most monumental vacation I've ever had. Well, thank you. Thank you, Erica. So I'm just going to go straight to it. Give us all the gist, because I, I know you actually... Um, you had it like a mini video on YouTube on your channel, and it was like about three minutes long. And I was like, oh, that's not enough. I wanted to see more. And is there a reason why it was actually not so long? And after you answered that question, just go, like, go ahead and tell us all the gist you did put in that video. Well, the reason why it wasn't so long is because sometimes on YouTube, people, they don't want to watch the whole thing. So I thought I would try to just narrow it down to like the highlights and the most important parts of of that particular tour. And that's why I try to just condense it down because I want to keep people's interest. Right. And that worked. Like for people like me, it did work. I was kind of like, ah, where's the rest? And then I waited and waited for a few weeks. It just never came. So that's part of why we're here today. We just wanted to talk a little bit our length a little bit. Not so long, but just wanted to know how was your visit? Um, if you don't mind, take us back how this actually came about, the whole process when you got to Ghana. Just briefly tell us what happened on your journey. Just like from the beginning, um, I did a podcast episode about Ghana. Um, I met, I followed this girl on um, social media, Tiffany Hurt, and I had her on my podcast to talk about Ghana. So she talked so much about it and was just like, this was her spot. She goes every year. And so I was like, you know, I would really like to go with you. So she was like, one year later, she was like, I'm going to Ghana. Who wants to go to Ghana? I, I replied back, I want to go to Ghana. So um, that's how it came about. I never met this girl before in my life, but she goes every year. So she was on my podcast. I felt like I trusted her. So um, I've never been before. And as a travel agent, sometimes you want to go with someone that's, go that's already been there. So you get that experience um, yeah. and then you learn about it. And that's what I did. I went with her and um, about two weeks before we left, she called me. She was like, hey, I know it was supposed to be a group trip. Everybody has canceled. You're the only one that has not canceled. Do you still want to go? I'm still going. Do you want to go? I was like, yes, I still want to go. I don't care. I solo travel anyway. So I was like, yes, I'll go. <clears throat> so I hopped on a plane, met her there, and the rest was history. It was the best decision I ever made not to cancel. Oh, so you guys didn't actually leave the United States together. You just kind of met at the Ghana location. Okay. So right. was, it, was it scheduled for any tour guy? Because I saw on your vlog that you... You, you kind of, even though you went alone, you ended up being in a group of people that you guys went around. Was there like a tour guide in the program that you guys had? Well, it was only three of us. You know, it was me, her, and then our driver. So, um, yeah, she had the trip all mapped out and planned out. And we had a driver that was with us every day. Um, and, um, you know, he became a friend. I still talk to him now. You know, it was just great. Wow, that's that's amazing. I never had the opportunity to visit some of the places that you briefly showed on your YouTube channel. So I was kind of jealous. I was like, oh, okay. So I, I think that I 
that's one of the places I've noted down to go whenever I visit Ghana. Soon it will be up because people have been asking me ever since I've started this channel and then this podcast show. People have been asking, you've been talking about Ghana, you've been talking about Africa, you've been actually encouraging other people that's never been there or they're not, not from there to visit. When are you going to come yourself to actually live by your own word? So it's it's in the pipeline, people. Just be patient with me. I still have a... Uh, well, I have my life here because I kind of like I had to I grew up here. So I have my whole life here. So I just have to plan. I can just get up and leave like I didn't I don't have anything else here. So um, I, I was actually trying to wonder because I've seen you. You just didn't go to Africa. You've been to other places around the world uh, overall and living in the United States for some time now. I know it's not that easy. I know many people were just going to think it's easy, but it's not. Mm -hmm. So what, what, how did you come about this whole traveling and agency thing that you, 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 you got going on right now? Well, um, back in the day, I used to plan all the trips for my family, you know, just small trips here, like four hours away here and there. And then one day I said to myself, you know, let me try my hand at, being a travel agent, let me just see if I like it or not, you know. So I spent one weekend researching, and then I just started the travel business. Went on, I had not really traveled, like, out of the country when I started my travel business. Went on a cruise um, after I started my travel business, and then I was off and running after that. After that, I was like, well, let me try this place, and let me try this place, and I just kept on going and going and I started learning the business and then I started traveling for myself. And then I was traveling so much that my friends um, couldn't go with me, but I still wanted to travel. So that's how <laughs> I slowly got into solo travel too. I was like, you know what? If you want to do all this traveling, your friends can't go with you. Like you said, it's not easy. It's not easy to pick yeah. up and go when you got responsibilities and I just started solo traveling one day. I started with a cruise. I was like, that's the most close, safe environment. If I can handle that, I'll go on to something else. So I took baby steps. And then, I mean, I just keep going and keep going. Just keep trying to push myself a little more. Excellent. Baby step is all you need. Mm -hmm. um, I think in everything that you actually do as a person, you would always want to take it easy, take it one step at a time. Once you actually yeah. get to mastering yourself, then you can actually go faster or how fast you actually ever you want to, you want, right. um, taking you back to Ghana or Africa mm -hmm. as a whole. Um, so before now, before say about four or five years back, there wasn't so much talk about Africa mm -hmm. to talk of Ghana as, as a whole. Um, now fast forward to 2023, 2022 back, I think it started from 2019. There's a lot of talk about Ghana. There's a lot of talk about Africa. What is your um, what is your understanding? Um, do you agree that to, for example, people like myself or other YouTubers around that are advocating for black people specifically to move to Africa? Do you agree with that conversation? And if if you can actually tell us why, if you agree, and if you don't, why as well? We just want to know just out of curiosity. Um, I don't, I don't think after one visit, I can speak on if people should move there or not. I don't think I'm well versed in that, <clears throat> but I would definitely say that first step would be to visit Ghana if you have never visited Ghana and then go from there. I could see a very strong argument to, if you don't live there, maybe have a home there maybe go every single year at the minimum. I think the first step for people to even start that conversation would be to take a visit there first and see for yourself. That is a smart answer because I, I tell people, because I've had people ask me why you, if you're advocating, why do you live here? Um, my, for example, some of us, we just, we moved here with our families. We were little, we didn't have mm -hmm. any space. And some exactly. for, for for other Africans, they uh they got older, they had their reasons, and just thought maybe I should just go try somewhere else. 
And all over the world, it's like almost everybody has wants to come to America. I have people that lives in the, they live in the UK that wants to come to America. And I'm like, you live in a place that's just like where America is or how America is. Why do you want to be here? So it's, it's become that conversation when you are trying to tell people, well, you know, after some years of living here, maybe you should like establish yourself. Because I've seen people that have been doing, that were actually doing good back in Africa or in mm -hmm. Ghana specifically. Left that over there, came here, and now they're like, whoa, I should have just stayed home. And now they're turning back and telling people, and they're like, oh, you're lying. You just don't want us to be successful as you are. You know, there's that talk. So yeah. you're right. It's it's a whole lot of, like, broad conversation. Me, as an African living in America, I have my own perspective, and I have my suggestions or my opinions or my ideas when it comes to this topic. But if I start to talk right now in this post after we finish mm -hmm. this conversation, you see in the comment, there's a lot of people that are not going to agree with what I said. Yeah. So I tend to reserve my my comments when it comes to that. But just out of curiosity, I just wanted to know what you think. So um, what, I don't know, uh, what, did you not like anything about Ghana? I loved everything about it. I absolutely loved everything about it. And I tell people it was a really well-rounded experience and vacation. Um, being a travel agent, I tend to get a lot of people who only want like beach vacations. They only want to go to like Jamaica or Mexico or stuff like that. But I tell people, you can, any kind of vacation that you want, you can have it in Ghana. I had the beach. I had the nightclubs. I had, you know, the party and experience. I had the culture the history. I got a little bit of everything from Ghana. The food was good. Not one complaint. Nothing. That's good to know because I was recently um, talking to a friend that she lived in, um, well, she she's from Jamaica originally. She came mm -hmm. in here just like I did. My family, I mean, her family came to New York and then I actually have her recording scheduled to talk with her. Because she's been in Ghana for about six months, if I'm not wrong. Okay. And on her YouTube channel, she uh, she had an interview with this lady that came from the UK. And she had a different understanding and opinion about how Ghana is for her. And I didn't think it was actually really um, that much of a deep research that she did. But, hey, mm -hmm. we all have the right to feel whatever we feel. So that's kind of like really uh, a big relief to hear that you actually found something good about Ghana and Africa as a whole. Do you have any um, trips coming? Do you have any group trips scheduled coming up? For Ghana? Uh, anywhere, but I hope it's Africa somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'm working, currently working on um, Ghana for February 2024. So I want to put that out there to my clients. And I, I, I think I'm going to try to take people every year from here on out. I think it's just a place that, oh, wow. that everyone should experience and should go in their lifetime. Um, I do have a group trip in November for the Maldives. Um, you know, that's fun, relaxation. But I think Ghana is a place that everyone should put on their bucket list to experience at least once in their life. I mean, even when I was there, I kept almost every day, I kept on saying, I cannot believe I'm in Africa I, I mean, I had to pinch myself. I kept, I kept saying, I can't believe I'm in Africa. I can't believe I'm seeing this and this. I can't believe I'm at the slave river. I can't believe my feet <laughs> is in the water. I can't believe I'm in the slave castle. I can't believe I walked through the door of no return. I can't believe I'm sitting on the street eating goat. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just couldn't believe it. So how was the experience? It may be different from me, but I, since I cannot be you, I mean, yeah. I know where I'm from. I know where I was born. I know where maybe my great grandparents are from. Right. How was the? I've been always wondering, like, how is it for you? Was it kind of like a eerie feeling? Like, was it a good feeling? Was it bad, or was it the mixture of both? A mixture of both. eerie feeling. I'm telling you, I think I I was there for nine days. I think I probably cried three or four days. Oh wow! <laughs> of the days I was there, so it it was a feeling like oh my god, 
putting yourself in your ancestors' shoes. Like, I can't believe they went through this. You know, we take life for granted. We take America for granted. We're here in America. They didn't want to come, you know? <clears throat> so, I mean, just thinking what they were thinking, like, I mean, I would cry. I mean, I've cry I cried like three or four days. So, it was a happy cry, like, you know, it was just amazing. It was just like a, I, I would say a surreal feeling, an out-of-body experience. Like, I yeah. cannot believe I'm in the motherland. I cannot believe where I'm at. Oh, that's great. That's great to know. Um, So, do you, I know, so guys, she does have, a. I think you do have like four or five videos of telling new time or first time travelers what to carry because I, I just recently mm -hmm. got some of the tips that you was giving. I was like, okay, I never thought of that. Um, do you have just just by chance because we have you here? If you could give us a free tip, like what do, what do first time travelers need, especially to go to a place like Africa? I know um, even back home people are still using mosquito nets and stuff like that to protect mm -hmm. themselves. So how did you not get sick? What did you do, and how how was the preparation for you? Okay, that's a great question. It was a lot of preparation. I did um I did go to my consult with my doctor and told her what where I was going and um and then I did get the necessary shots, my yellow fever vaccine, my malaria pills, you know, because I went in December, I got the flu shot, I got my mm -hmm. um COVID booster. <clears throat> I did take, you know, bug repellent and stuff like that. I didn't really have an issue with mosquitoes like I thought I was going to because, you know, I, I read everything about, you know, sleeping in nets and stuff like that. Totally did not need it for Ghana. I went to Ghana, Kumasi, Cape Coast, didn't need it. I have traveled to Jamaica and Punta Cana and come back completely filled with mosquito bumps. Africa wow. was totally the <laughs> opposite. I thought I was a magnet for mosquitoes because I get bit so bad in Punta Cana and in Jamaica, but I did not have that issue in Africa. But I did take all my necessary vaccines and medications that, you know, my doctor recommended. So that's what I would say. I would consult with your doctor and um, truly figure out what um, medicines and vaccines you need. There were a whole list of things that they said I needed that my doctor really didn't feel like I needed, you know. Wow. Yeah. Um, so I would I would start with there, you know, with the medical preparation for Ghana. And just think about it. Once you get those vaccines, I think I, yellow fever and then I think I got hepatitis A and B shot. You, ne you don't have to do it again. You can the rest of the places you go, you've already taken care of it. You're good to go. Right. Right. Well, thank yeah. you. And guys, my tip. Start if you don't have a passport, yes. apply early. My family and I, back in April, just this April, we had a vacation schedule because my birthday is in March, our son's birthday is in January, and my wife is in April. So um, every time we just try to like combine it and go on a vacation. Mm -hmm. Guess what? It didn't happen this year because we just. My son is uh, fourteen months old now. I didn't think anything of it. When I did my application back in, um, I think it was like 2018, My I did the express and it came like in two weeks. Yes. So I was thinking the exact same thing for my son. Took the photo, paid the express. It's much expensive now and even. And mm -hmm. we did everything, booked the hotel, paid everything, booked the flight, sat here. Passport never came. Vacation never happened. So... The biggest tip that and the biggest lesson that I've learned is apply for your passport on time so you don't get stuck and don't be a victim like me. I didn't get to go yeah. anywhere. Yes, <laughs> um, that, no, this is I want to say this about the tip because you reminded me of my biggest hiccup on this trip to Ghana was the visa. I did not. This was the very first time I went to a country where I had to apply for a visa. I did not know. I thought it was an online thing. That This is my biggest tip for people. I thought it was an online thing. All I had to do is fill out something online. I immediately got approval. I did not know that I had to mail in my passport to get a visa. I had to physically mail my passport to Washington, you know, 
with a whole bunch of paperwork and then get my passport back. I waited to the last minute. I was in panic mode. I paid for the express. I was in panic mode like, oh my God, I'm not going to get to go to Ghana because I drug my feet. So I would say allow yourself at least three months in advance um, to apply for your visa because you have to physically mail in your passport. And I did not know that my first time. And um, I will never make that mistake again. And don't get the um, one visit visa for Ghana because once you go, you're going to love it so much. You're going to want to go back and forth again. Oh, so they so have multiple ahead. options over yeah. there too? See, go I did not know that multiple, myself. Yes, go ahead and get the multiple visas so you never have to go through that process again. Well, yeah, thanks for that tip because I did not know. Yeah. Which department did you have to do this with? Is it online or well, what's the department called? Because I've never been back, so I don't know. Yeah, I, I went to the um, Ghana Embassy website. And then, the, you know, they had a little link oh. for apply for your visa. And so I, I did all the, you know, the whole paperwork and all of that online and you do everything online you have to upload everything online however you still have to print everything out put it in an envelope put your visa i mean put your passport in there and i had to mail it to washington dc yeah. wow wow that that is that seems like one of a, a job <laughs> all right so job it was a job and i wasn't aware up front yeah so. yeah i did not know that this is an eye opener or well, thank you for, uh, for that erica so uh let's talk about a little bit about business and money you are by your agency what do you guys do how can we contact you if we wanted to stuff like that and then um if you have a website i will just put it down here whilst mm -hmm. we uh publish this video so uh give us the uh the direction Okay. Yes, definitely. I have a website, ericajamestravel.com. That's Erica with a C, not a K. So very simple, ericajamestravel.com. Um, you can find me everywhere on social media, EJ the Travel Diva. Um, that's my name on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, everywhere. Keep it simple. Erica James Travel is my travel agency. Well, guys, you heard it by uh, your own self if you want to go to africa or anywhere else basically i don't want to minimize your abilities i've seen you travel i've personally seen your channels i've looked at you on social media i think i saw you on instagram as well aside mm -hmm. from youtube and she's really traveled so i think next time even if i have any travel plans i will contact you as well and, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can get it going and get some good advice that would help us out in the end. Cause sometimes traveling and actually making the plans by yourself is, it's kind of yeah. a big headache. <laughs> it's, it's, it's I'm not going to lie. Headache, and there's no reason to be a big headache when you can use a travel agency. It really does. It doesn't cost you anything to use a travel agency. Um, there are some people who charge a planning fee up front. I have a lot of budget conscious, you know, travelers. And my goal is to, help everybody travel so I don't charge a planning fee up front. Um, I just want to, you know, get, I don't want to charge anybody two, $300 just to plan a trip when you're really just, you could put that money on your trip and, you know, have a good time. So I just like to try to help everybody experience the world one trip at a time and do what I can, you know, to help everybody. Right. Get there. Right. Well, thank you so much. Like I said, I promise I wasn't going to take so much of your time. No. I am so I grateful. I love talking about travel. I can talk about travel all day long. <laughs> I am so grateful that you actually showed up. And in fact, you actually showed us uh, and, and a, lot, a whole lot of information that me personally, I didn't know. And I'm sure some of our viewers would not know as well. And you actually gave all of that to us for free today. I know you actually mm. do have a consultation that you charge people to give all of this information, but for Africa chat and Africa chat subscribers, you just gave it out for free today. And I just want to yeah. say, we do appreciate you for everything that you're doing. Still on the issue of returning home, let's go to Ghana. The year of return is an initiative that began in 2019. Ghana has been calling on Africans in the diaspora to return home. Hundreds of especially African-Americans have already relocated and are adding value to their communities and the economy.